Anna no, so she's not gonna miss anything. Um, as you saw on the side, we open the doors quarter to seven. Our lectures start around 7 p.m. Uh, here on PESC, we have a very interactive lecture, so it doesn't mean the person that is you know, facilitating the conversation knows everything. Tonight is me, Dai, <laughs> uh, but we have other workers here in the house. Uh, it's more about we put a subject out so we can share experience or, you know, some, uh, we can go home with some food for thought and then do our own uh, research, our own journey for things that resonate with our own hearts. We are not here to tell you what is right, what is wrong. We are here to facilitate and give you some things to think about it, you know? Um, so that's why we are here every night, not every night, the nights that we are open for the public lectures to share those experiences and those uh, subjects that we think is interesting for us to kind of, you know, have a bit of more knowledge um, research and, and search for our spirituality and everyone has their own way to search for that so we don't judge anything on that side we're pretty much here to have an open conversation so you can interact anytime making questions doesn't know we all we all know the answers but it's more about having a chat and you know some friends here and have something to talk and something common that is the search for us for our spirituality um usually this we start lectures around 7, goes around 7.30, 7.40. After that, we have a prayer box, that, that little blue box over there. We have little papers in that, so you can put the names of people that you wish to send you our love, your vibration, or maybe people that right now you're going with some trouble together. So we could send in our love and our, our good vibration so we can pray together after the lecture. We're going to have this, uh, we call final prayer. Uh, so we put all our good intentions towards the people that we have the names in the box, or you can just think about them so we can have a prayer together. And then we're going to let you know when is your time for the healing passes that happens in here on the behind the tables. Usually we have a beautiful curtain over here. I'm not going to not sure what's going on with the community center. They think they took for war to wash, but they never return. So we are doing our best. Probably, I don't know. So we are doing our best. Um, so yeah, the healing passes happen over here, but then Carmi gonna let you know when is your time to go there. Um, you pretty much just sit there. We have a small prayer and then the work is gonna doing the healing passes. And then you're gonna let you know when you finish like, um, we're gonna say hey man or you know have a good night you may go home now in peace so you know that finished we're gonna have the um the water over here and then you're gonna have your order and then you're welcome to go home or you're welcome to stay the only thing that we ask is just to remain silent while while we are doing the healing passes over there you know to in respect of the other people that are receiving over there and so just keep quiet to everything finish uh, but you're welcome to stay have some chat she usually brings some very nice vegan recipe we are kind of guinea pig for her so she always try new things so we always try and say yeah that's good so we can share that food by the end of the night tonight is a cheesecake without cheese <laughs> it's a cheesecake without cheese It's very fancy. I got a little bit and it's good. Uh, so yeah, if you wish to stay by the end of the night and try that marvelous veg vegan cheesecake from G, stay. Your mother work. We always chat a little bit by the end and sometimes we forgot to go home. Um, but yeah, but until we finish the healing passes, we just uh, ask you to sit quietly to not disturb the, the work that's going on over there. And tonight I will be talking about Paul of Tarsus. Not sure if you all know them, him. Not them, it's just one person. Um, but yeah, but that is after our initial prayer that tonight's gonna be G. Yeah, we have new people, we are so happy. Everyone is gonna do a prayer with you? <laughs> no. Someone in Zoom? Someone in Zoom? Oh, hi, Colleen. We have people in Zoom as well.
Thank you, G. Come in. That's all right. So, yeah, tonight we're going to be talking about self reform, a very, um, we always talk about self reform on the spirit's house. So, it's about something that we always chase and we always try to keep up and you know, do our own. Uh, but tonight I've been asked to be talking about Paul of Tarsus and how he could be an example of a self-reform. I'm not too sure uh, here who know Paul, um, who Paul of Tarsus is. You can raise your hand if you know who he is. If you don't know, that's okay. No big deal. It's fine. I can let you know who that guy was. He was nice um, at some point, <laughs> you know, um, but I'll let you know about that. Well, before we talk about Paul, Jackson, can you make me a favor? Just turn off the light, the first, that light over there. So I think then we can see better over here. Bottom middle. Bottom, Bottom middle. 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 No, middle. 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 Yes. <laughs> it's better now to see? Okay. Before we talk about uh, Paul of Tarsus, um, if I have no time, around half an hour to let you know all about his life and how he you know, went through his self-reform and everything that he have been through. So if you're interesting, interested in know more about him, we have this amazing book here that it calls Paul and Stephen. It's being written by Chic Xavier with the help of Emmanuel. We do have this book here in English. That's a miracle as well, because it's not often that we have a spirit's book translate to English. In my personal opinion, this is like one of the best books. I had read a few spirits book, not all of them because we have not quite a bit, but like this one, I can tell you that kind of really moves something inside of me and make me see like spiritism in my own life and my own choices on a different way. Um, when I was finishing this book, we were on holidays around Harv Bay, I believe, camping. And like, you know, when you reading a book and you can't put it down and like it touches you so deep that you kind of cry without even know why you cry, you know why you're crying, but in, you know, and really gets you deep. So that's what this book did to me, make me see spiritism and make me see how we can transform our own lives in a different way. Of course, Paul, you know, went through a lot. You have to consider his time and, you know, what he's been through. Uh, but I think it's a book that can give you some light and how to transform yourself and how to um, seek for that transformation, you know. But before I tell you about Paul, I have to tell you about Saul. Saul, Saul in English. Saul, you that's the best English person. Saul, Saul, Saul. In Portuguese, it's Saul. Because before Paul become Paul, he was Saul. And he was born 510 after Christ on that year. Um, his parents, they are Jewish, but 
he lives on a society with all the privilege of the Roman people because they are very, very rich. So he went to the best schools of the time. You know, he went to the um, become a, a diaspora of Gamaliel. There was kind of a pope, but not a pope uh, back then, no, over 2000 years ago. So he was one of the students of Gamaliel. So he was studying to become kind of a pope of the time. So the one that would guide Jewish people about the traditions from Moses. So they followed the Jew Jewish traditions, you know, by the book, by Moses and all, all the old um, books from the Bible. Um, and the thing is, more after Jesus comes and walk between us, as we all know, and what happened with that awesome guy. Uh, after he uh, death or crucifixion, uh, the followers of Christian, or as they know back then as the followers of the way, have been persecuted by uh, the Jewish people because they say Jesus came to kind of break the law, you know, and wasn't the true follower of Moses and the traditions of the Jewish people. They didn't believe Jesus what who he was saying he was. So all the people that believe in Jesus and try to follow Jesus uh, has been persecuted by the um, all the Jewish um, people, especially so, because he was being great on what he was doing, studying to be his you know, Pope of the back then. And one of his great triumphs against Jesus and against the way and the follower of Jesus was uh, it was the stoning of Stephen. And that story, I have no time to tell you, but if you read this book, you're going to know. So maybe I make you curious and you're going to try to read this book. That is an amazing book. So that was his first thing that made him get really famous around the Jewish people, you know, and become like the voice of Jewish people back then. And his main goal was to persecute everyone that followed Jesus and the way. So that was so was that was his business back then. And he was really happy doing it. He had the um, the Rom the Romans um, kind of supporting him to do that. Uh, and everyone that was following Jesus back then has to kind of run away, you know, seek um, asylum someone else because they couldn't live there. And just to give a little bit of gossip about who Stephen was. Stephen, he was the brother of Abigail. That, are you prepared to that? Abigail was the fiance of Saul. But he didn't know that until he kind of sent him to death. So that's a really nice story that kind of make everything connect on the way how this family you know, uh, how so met Stephen and Abiga you and how that all connect. But that's another story for another day, just to give you a little bit of curiosity about who Stephen was and what make so feel so much at he after he stone Stephen. So after this act, that was a big act in Rome, he just kind of uh, started to go um, searching for more Christians to, you know, to judge them and pretty much send them to death. And one of the one of the trips that he did, he was going to Damascus. And that's one of the famous passages on Bible when Saul went to Damascus and that happened to him on the road to Damascus. That is the, on the Bible. I'm just going to read that. It's better. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashes around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice to a voice say to him, so, so, why do you persecute me? And then he asked, who are you, Lord? So asked, I am Jesus, whom you persecuting, you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. So that's happened to him. He was on his journey to um, persecute Christians and all the followers. But on the road to Damascus, um, a big light came towards him, and that was Jesus. He fell from his horse, and then he went blind for three days. 
he walked into Damascus with the help of his, um, what do we call it in English? Forgot. Yeah, the guides, the guys that what? Uh, yeah, the guards, thank you, <laughs> from his guards. And then Jesus told him, you go into Damascus and speak with Ananias. Ananias was one of the disciples of Jesus, and he was meant to kind of heal, kind of to heal so so he could start his journey of self-reform, you know, and his um and his destinies here on earth. Because Jesus told him, You are persecuting me, but he was meant to be the one who spread the Jesus words on, on earth. So and then the story goes on about he going to the desert, being three years, um, you know, uh, on his um, inner search. So he went for three years to the desert and stayed there. Uh, he even went back to Gamaliel a few years later to seek for some knowledge and some guidance. And then Gamaliel back then, he started to follow Jesus as well, you know, and told him, well, not going to be an easy job and then po and then he decided he needs a new name because so the person that was persecuting christians couldn't be the one that going to be out there talking about jesus so he wants to change his name to to kind of celebrate not celebrate but to kind of make like a mark on the new um on a new chapter of his life and then, so that means who one who is asked requests something and proud. That's the meaning of the name of soul. And then he decided he needed a new name, a new name that could kind of project what he was seeking, what he wants for himself. So he decided to call himself Paul. That means modest, small, and humble. And so he began his journey to transform himself first and try to spread the word of Jesus. Of course, it wasn't an easy one. He had been persecuted, stoned, like everything that could imagine, go to prison, get out of prison. Like he went through a lot of you know, um, things, troubles, um, persecutions, because he was, he was one before, the one who chased people that believes in Jesus, but now he was the one that putting out there Jesus' word. Um, it wasn't an easy one. And, but the thing is tonight, we're going to talk about how we can take that example of being modest, of trying to search to be a different person. Because, you know, it's kind of water and oil. How are you going to get this example of someone that was there, that killed Christians, you know, that used to hate Jesus, how he could become that person that loved Jesus and was, and was, was, kind of the rock of what today we know as the church, because he's the one from the Bible that sent the famous letters for the Corinthians, for the Acts, for all the other cities to spread the word of Jesus. So Paul nowadays is um, considered the rock of the Catholic church. You know, he was the one who built um, the church as we kind of know, because before them, uh, the words of the Jesus and everything was pretty much as we are doing here, just a chat. So I told G, G told her son, you know, and these words keep moving on. And then because he realized in one of his many, his many journeys that he couldn't do that, you know, go to, let's just say to Sydney and, and talk about Jesus and then go to Melbourne and talk about Jesus. He wasn't able to be in every place all the time. So he decided to start uh, writing letters and tell them about the Jesus teachings and send these letters to the community. And then that community, that church back then could follow his letters, you know, and have their meetings and have them kind of what they could discuss about Christians and celebrate Jesus and all of that. So that's why Paul nowadays is considered the rock of the church and the one that built the church, especially the Catholic church as we know. Um, but then, it's so much to talk about him, but tonight the focus is about this, how we can work on our self-reform, how we can use this example of a guy who basically killed people because he hates Jesus, to a guy that loved Jesus so much, 
that did everything in his power to spread the word. But he couldn't do that before transform himself and allow especially Jesus to work in him, you know, and allow that work to transform him from inside and out. And it wasn't a simple click like that. It's not because he went blind for three days and then you know, get his vision again that, oh, after three days, he said, oh, okay, Jesus is so miraculous. You know, he made me go blind and then made me get my vision back. So now I love Jesus. It wasn't like that. He made a decision on that day when he went blind. But by the end of his life, like was years and years of self-work, you know, self-thought, self-inquiries um, about his choices from the past. He suffers a lot about Tony Stephen, that was his first big act against Jesus. So went years and years until he could forgive himself and what he did back then. As you know, there is no evil. What it is, is ignorance. So back then, he didn't know better about his act because he thought he was following the Jewish law. And so he was doing right and took him years of kind of no, trying to know himself and search for this peace inside of him. So that's what we're trying to bring here tonight, how we could put that towards our lives today. How many things like, just think about one act that we did today that you may regret, it can be anything, you know? How we could change that? Should we go to the desert for three years like uh, Paul did? Do we need that? Or can we just maybe after tonight, before go to bed, try to have a chat with God and try to think about, oh, did I choose right today? So it's what he did. It took him years to do that. But it was something that every day that he was seeking for, like why I did that. Okay, I didn't know better. So I, I would try to do this. I would try to do that. So it was little steps that he did every day in search of self-forgiveness, in search of looking for looking at Jesus and trying to follow his footsteps of forgiving forgiving himself first and forgive others because once he was a great like a big guy that did take the laws and then after he decides to follow Jesus he was the one receiving stones he was the one that was going to prison so it took him years of with his own thoughts to accept that and transform his soul and be in peace with himself for what he did back then and what he was choosing to be from now on when he decides to become Paul. And that was, it's hard to talk about Paul because it's so many stories and the story is so complex on a sense that everything kind of one act depends on other and other and other. What I choose here tonight is just one little step that he himself called one little step for a self-reform. It's not about going blind. We don't need to go blind, thank God, to realize that. Because if you were here tonight, we already made a choice to try to be better, to try to transform ourselves. So what I'm just bringing here tonight is about one of his um, advices about one little step for self-reform because self-reform is something that requires us first I want to change and then the rest is with God you just need to be open about I want to change and then the rest flow towards you you know you kind of going find ways to transform your will to kind of try to choose better if today you wasn't able to and once you're open, you are going to learn to forgive yourself for the bad choices that you do, because we always do. You know, it's not every day that we are in a good mood and kind of, you know, go on without saying bad words or without, without you know, send someone, find some nice ways <laughs> to not say something else. So self-reform for Paul was about be open and say, here I am. Take me as I, as I am. And then Jesus is going to work inside us. Of course, we need to work. It's not something that I'll say, Jesus, I'm ready for a self-reform. I'm just sitting here. So do your work. It's not about that. It's about be ready 
to let Jesus work with you and but you have to do your part as well you know trying to make better choices instead of maybe one day in, at work you're gonna explode about a situation that you don't like perhaps but before you know you shout out and you no know, and have conflict with people you maybe take a five minutes break go take a air go drink a coffee water come back think about your ex think about the things you want to say so that's what self-reform is about it it's not about you became a saint from today for tomorrow it's about choose little things every day that helps you transform your spirit and transform your will and it's going to become easier you know um i used to be very nervous in, tra in traffic and with a lot of other stuff but once i decided to not explode and once i decided to take a minute two minutes five minutes to think about it now it's easy for me to just laugh about some situations that maybe 10 years ago when I didn't know spiritism and, you know, um, I was just like angry. And nowadays I'm just like, ah, whatever. It is what it is, you know, move on. But took me a few goals about take myself out of the situation, choose to not be angry towards that situation and transform that inside of me. Does that make me a sense? No, far from that but made me a little bit better than I was 10 years ago. And that's what self-reform is about. It. It's not about you became a saint in one or two, three days, even though if you read the Bible, read this book or read any book you want, it's not about that. It's about the small choices that you do every day to be better. And that's what Paul is talking about on this next. Yeah. Try to understand ourselves as a spiritual entity. As a spiritual entity. As a spiritual entity, then start thinking that no identity of the spiritual entity. I can see it's happening. But it's a big more information about how we are as a spiritual entity. Try to understand because there is a lot of I will have a bit more on this piece of paper that talks about what you just said. And then, as I said, Paul's life was full of a lot of examples. And I have to choose one little one to talk about self-reform. And I choose the little steps because I like little steps. I think sometimes it's easier for us, that's me, to look on the little things. Because sometimes if you look on a big mountain, that you have to climb, it kind of becomes scary, you know? You kind of maybe sometimes want to give up. But if you decide to take one step, so you one step closer than you, you were before. So that's what I like about self-reform on those little steps. And that's one of the things Paul wrote in one of his letters to the Corinthians. And when he says, he said, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away that what you said, we are wasting away this body here because it's something that we kind of change in every life. Yet, inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. And that's why Jackson says so beautifully, because we are a spirit. So day by day, we are renew our chances. We are renew our choices. So every day, we have an opportunity to do a little bit better. And because we are eternal, we are spiritual, spiritual beings, we are immortal, this body here, one day will give up of this life because it's the natural law, you know, this is one experience and we are here experiencing things that we are meant to. And that's what we are going to do. And they, on another life, we are carrying on those, that knowledge and then gonna be renewed day by day with other experience we are gonna to have in other lives with other choices. And then I got one text um, that Emmanuel kind of translate this piece 
from the Bible so beautifully that I want to share with you guys. She, can you grab one and pass it on? I think I have enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're a couple, you get one. <laughs> I know it's over there. I put here as well, but sometimes it's hard to read. So that's why I decided to print it for you guys. As I said, Paul's life is full, is full of examples for us to focus on. But tonight, the self-reform, thank you, grab for me because I have little thing, all these moves. Thank you. That's right. Um, I want to focus on one thing. And this is from the book, uh, I'm not too sure the name of this book in English, but it's in Portuguese, Fonte. Huh? Fonte Viva. I think it's a spring life, life spring. Yeah, from Chic Xavier. And then Emmanuel, that is Chico mentor, kind of explains more for us that uh, chapter from the Bible that we just read. A live spring, yeah. Um, and then the title is slowly, slowly, but always. That we just talk about it. It's like little step every day. And it goes like this. Observe the spirit of consequence and gradation that prevails in the minimum sectors of the nature. And I'm sorry if the translation is not good. I couldn't find a good translation in English, so I try my best. If you see some mistakes, please ignore it. Please forgive me. That's what spiritism is about it. <laughs> I did my best. Uh, nothing is accomplished in leaps and according to the divine law, there is no privilege nowhere. The cob is filled grain by grain. The tree grows millimeter by millimeter. The forest, the forest is born of insignificant seeds. The construction is lifted piece by piece. It starts the fabric on the threads. The most famous pages were produced letter by letter. The richest city is built up inch by inch. The greatest fortunes of gold and stones were extracted from the ground fragment by fragment. The longest road is paved meter by meter. The great river that flows into the sea is a set of liquid streams. Do not abandon your great dream of knowing and doing in superior domains of intelligence and feeling, but do not forget about the little work day by day. Life is a renewed process everywhere and according to the word sublime of Paul, though the flesh perishes, the individuality imperishable reform itself incessantly. Is that right? Incessantly. So that we do not change, however, in the opposite direction of expectations from above, it is essential that we know how to persevere with the self-improvement effort in constant vigilance in the activity that help and enables us. If some divine ideal inhabits your spirit, do not forget the little service daily so that it takes place at an opportunity time. Is that a favorable opportunity for realization? He acts regularly with a soul focused on the goal. There are mishaps and struggles thorns and stones in the path, proceed anyway. Time, relentless, dominator of civilizations and men, marches only six minutes an hour, but they never stop. Let's keep the lesson and move forward, improving ourselves, slowly, but always. So that's the message of Paul. He does have really rich 
uh, examples for us to follow and try to help us to understand our self-reform. But I try to, to choose one. I try to introduce you to Paul so you can get curious about him. He's a nice guy and you can get to know more of him up in this book. I really like that book, you know now. Hmm? Oh yeah, don't forget the tissues. It's a book that makes you kind of cry river in reverse of water. Um, but for me, it's that. I just try to introduce you to that guy, make you curious about it and go search for him and the other amazing journeys that he went to. Some of them really sad. He died at the end, we all do. <laughs> um, but it's more about this, this example of by, don't rush, you don't need to rush. You know, you don't need to worry about if you're gonna accomplish everything that you want on this life. Maybe you're not forgiving yourself about the choices that you made in the past, um, but don't worry about them. You made the right choice. Like tonight is one of the good ones. You're here trying to search and to share love and knowledge with all of us because we all have beautiful things to share. But it's about this journey of daily little steps and baby steps. And if tonight is reading that little passage from Emmanuel that will give you some inspiration, that is great. It's a great achievement. So don't worry too much about, um, I spoke about a lecture and I use Miley Cyrus song. She's a great girl too. She does have a nice songs. Uh, and the song talks about is the climb. So it's always gonna have an out the mountain. It's always gonna have a new day. So it's not about who is the other side. What are you gonna achieve when you get to the top? It's about your journey. It's about your climb that mountain. And you only can climb that mountain one step each time. So if today you are able to do one step, good. Keep the daily work as Emmanuel suggests us. Slowly, but always. So that's my message for you tonight. If you like to share something else or you have any thoughts, you're more than welcome. Should I start again? Should I start again? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So I was just making a comment and I'd like to expand on um, some notes that, that I made on forgiving, how important it is forgive, to forgive yourself in terms of self-reform. ourselves um we we need to clear that frame first right we need to because if we just keep painting on top of that the picture is never going to be as we really visualize the picture the final picture the perfect picture so we need to clear that first and then start painting again our picture it is clearing is about forgiving ourselves now, until we can really forgive ourselves and have compassion toward us, towards ourselves, we are always be painting on top of smudges, yeah, smudges, or on top of pictures that we that it doesn't not interest doesn't interest uh, us anymore. It's not of our interest anymore. Um, so that's just if we imagine it's very important, so important, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that this. Uh, Think about we need to look 
look back and like Paul, and I'm sure if Paul had not forgiven himself and had compassion to his old self, he would not be able to proceed with the, the mission and, and his journey. Yeah, that's what my comment was. Thank you. Like to share any thoughts or knowledge? direction on <laughs> <laughs> the wrong direction like as i said on the beginning we always we all are where we are meant to be so there is no right or wrong in our lives we all have been through the path that we have to and if you're here tonight it's because you have to be here tonight so there is no right or wrong so all all the paths all the streets all the roads takes you towards god so we are all, only experience things that we have to in this life. And then on the next life, it will be something different. Because you don't need to be like a spiritist, a spiritist to develop your spirituality. There is nothing to do like with books and religions or Bible. It's about who you choose to be, to be a better person, to do good. That's what it's about. Jesus didn't told, didn't told people to kind of read the Bible and do this and do that. He just told Love God above all things and love your brothers and sisters as you do yourself. That's the commandment. Commandment. Command. Command. The command. That's the only one that we have to follow. Of course, books like this help us amazingly. Bible has so many beautiful teachings that we could follow. Other religions have so many other beautiful books that we could read and get the knowledge to transform ourselves and do our self-reform. But as Paul, in this little, little, little piece of his life about walking daily, slowly, but always, that's a great achievement. So if we can get with that tonight and have this little seed, as he said, the big forest, we start with the most little seeds. So we just need little one and then do the work daily.
changes the heart, changes things, changes the way of the heart. Slowly, surely. Yeah. <laughs> And always, yeah. Little by little. Anyone else? No? No, only uh, only he only he saw the light. The guards didn't. They thought he went cuckoo. Was only his encounter with Jesus. No one else saw it. And he fell from his horse, uh, or donkey, I'm not too sure what he was riding back then. Um, and then he went blind and he had that little chat with Jesus. And Jesus just, just told him, go to Damascus, enter the city and find Ananias, that one of the disciples of Jesus that ran away, trying to uh, not be killed by him. Um, and then he met, Jesus told Ananias to go there and fix Saul and give his uh, sight back. And then Ananias said to Jesus, are you crazy, man? Not doing that? So it's pretty much the chat they have. I'm putting up today's word, but <laughs> I think it was something like around those lines. Um, but this story is a bit bigger than that. And this book is free, by the way. If someone's going to take home tonight, you're more than welcome. Um, and here, Emmanuel tells the story and all the details, what it happens. Um, Ananias didn't want to go there and say, he told Jesus, are you crazy? That guy wants to kill me. I'm not going there, you know, give his vision back. Are you crazy, Jesus? And Jesus said, yeah, you do as you told. So Ananias had to go there. And then the transformation of Paul become from that point on. And then he decided to be Paul. He decided to follow Jesus and he decided to accept his journey and accept what Jesus has prepared to him. I'm just trying to put on today's words, but it's pretty much what went on back then. <laughs> um, in, do you like some? No? Hope that answer your question. <laughs> no, it was just him. He only he was the only one who saw the light of Jesus and had this encounter with Jesus. Not in the beginning. So we hope to Just, uh, 
balance. So we're going to move into the, um, our prayer box, the final prayer. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't do the prayer prayer, jeez. <laughs> um, and again, just a friendly reminder, after we finish that prayer, we just ask you to remain in silence, to keep the vibration of the room until the work of the healing passes is done. Carmen will let you know when is your time to go up there. Just please do so in silence and return to your seats in silence or you're welcome to go home if you wish to. And it was a really nice to see all of you if I don't have a chance to say goodbye for you. <laughs> so I just invite you guys to sit the way that you feel that is comfortable for you. There is no right way to sitting. There is no open eyes, closed eyes. There is your way of connections, your particular way of connection with God. Whatever your heart tells you to do it, do so. It's your moment of connection. It's your moment to open your heart, your mind, and to release. Start feeling where you are, your surroundings. Take a deep breath in. You're caring too much. Just try to take a deep breath in and release. Another one. It just feels that your body now, some way, is lighter. Just be present to this moment. We understand that our daily routine is full of things for us to think, to decide, to rush. But we are asking you for just one moment, a few minutes, it's slowly one step each time to just be present in here. Start open your mind for the words that we share here tonight, for the little steps that we have to choose every day. We are not running to have winners and losers. We are going together. So you can decide if you wanna go fast or slow. There is no right, there is no wrong. What is there is what is right for you and what you decide to do. And it's okay. Forgive yourself. We didn't know better back then. And I'm sure we're still gonna make few mistakes. Not because we want to, 
but because we are learners. We are children of God. And as children, learning to walk, each step is a victory. If we fall, we will stand up and try again. And it's okay. We have a father that loves us so much that give us infinite opportunities to try again. So just keep climbing. It doesn't matter the size of the mountain that you have to climb. It's not the size that matter. What is important is that you are deciding to do the first step. And that is a big victory. So take that. It's great. Fulfill your heart, your spirit with that energy that you choose to do one step each time. One step, little day, day by day. And with this beautiful energy that is surrounding us now, that happiness that is surrounding all of us, that know that we are choosing one step every day. And that is such amazing light and energy. And this feeling we want to share with the names that are in the box. If you didn't have time to write down a name, it's okay. You can think about that person. Maybe someone you want to send some love. Maybe someone that you may be not talking too much lately. Someone that you are having some troubles with. We are choosing here one step of forgiving ourselves and forgive others. It doesn't mean that it's an easy one, but today we are choosing to send love. We are choosing to send everyone our love, our energy, our light. And I'm sure they are receiving. And for that, we are grateful. So tonight, once we walk through those doors on our way home, we are happy that we choose, that we are forgiving ourselves, that we are forgiving others. And in that mountain, that doesn't scare us anymore. Because we know we're gonna do one step each day. And when we are ready, and when is the right time, we're gonna complete the task. So be it. Ciao, colleague. Oh, bye. 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 Thank you.